Hi, Nancy from Metal here. This is part two of our 3D Pixel Storm tutorial. In part one, we created a complex 3D logo and we did it using Shapeshifter AE and built-in features of After Effects. Now we're going to take things one step further. We're going to use the generator. That's a built-in feature of Shapeshifter AE and Freeform Pro. You'll see it's almost like a plugin unto itself. It does lots of cool stuff. Let's take a look and we'll see exactly how we're going to use it. We've made this plus shape for the overview of the generator. We've numbered the arms 1 to 4 so that we can easily follow the movements we're going to demonstrate. Once we apply Shapeshifter AE, we can manipulate it in 3D. The first thing we'll do is make 12 instances. The default spatial distribution is behind master. We can also select in front of master and distribute equally from center. We'll leave the default setting of behind master. The default setting for instance Z offset is 100. We'll keep that as is and set Y to 100. If we set all the offset instances to zero, then all instances are placed one on top of the other, kind of hidden within the master. We'll reset the default. Animate this and it can create a neat effect all on its own. Next is rotations. On top is spiral rotation. We can toggle through positive and negative values for each of the X, Y, and Z axes. There's a reset back to zero. Notice that the instances are casting and receiving shadows. We can already create something really cool just with the instances feature and the spiral rotation. Looks complex, but we see how easy it really is. Let's reset now back to zero. On to incremental rotations with a separate setting for each axis. Same deal, we toggle back and forth through the positive and negative values and choose the settings that we like. The possibilities are endless. Lots of room for experimentation here. As I said earlier, the generator is like a plug-in unto itself. We'll reset back to zero now. Now on to scale, uniform scale. We have control again over all three axes. When we enter a value of 90% for all three, all the instances get reduced except for the master. Now we'll reset them all. Incremental scale. Look what happens when we reduce all three axes to 90%. Each instance takes a value of 90% of the one before it in the series. Let's start combining things. We'll add a spiral rotation Y of 11 degrees. Now we'll set all the instance offsets to zero. Cool. Kind of like a deck of the same card flipping through itself. Now we'll set the spiral rotation of X to 11. Wow, looks great. Let's orbit around this formation. You can see with just a few tweaks we can get some interesting results. Animate these settings and the camera, render and you're done. Just like that. At the bottom of the effect stack, we have the generator's random factors. So why do we randomize? Well, random movement is something we see every day in the natural world. Natural processes are inherently random, like the weather or the placement of freckles on a face. When we add random factors to an animation, we mimic this unpredictable and natural process. The movement looks less mechanical, more pleasing to the eye. Let's take a real world example to illustrate this concept. Say we want to, I don't know, take over the world. And say we could do this by pre-comping. We could create a global network of pre-comping After Effects users. Now say these After Effects users needed a little convincing. To help us along, we could create a device. Let's call it the Hypno Precompulator. Ooh, it's evolved. It's obvious that one instance is not enough to cover the globe, so we replicate this many times. Now, this is awesome, but notice they're in a symmetrical formation. Kind of predictable, don't you think? If we randomize them, however, then we can't predict their path. Their movements will be more effective will be one step closer to taking over the world, one pre-comp at a time. Just kidding. Or am I? Now back to our tutorial. In part one of this series, we created a displacement map. 
We then used Shapeshifter AE directly on that displacement map comp. We also used the same comp as a displacement map. Let's look at the displacement map comp. We created an animated shape with layer masks, applied the ramp effect, and used the 3D Pixel Storm animation preset that ships with After Effects. Next, we'll look at the reflection map. There you go. Now back to our master comp. We added two parallel lights and an AE camera. We set two keyframes, one at the start of the sequence and another at four seconds. In essence, all we're doing is traveling closer to the surface of the animation over time. Let's switch to the top view. This will give a better idea of what the camera animation looks like. Now back to our master comp. Here's the project file that we set up in part one. Let's take a closer look at how this animation was set up. We begin with a simple square with rounded corners. The default 3D extrusion is 40, but we want to set it to 1. Then we set the displace height to 20. Next, we move on to 3D transforms. At the beginning of the timeline, we'll set the X rotation to minus 160. At 2 seconds on the timeline, we'll set it to 0. Now, if we go to the 15 second point in the timeline, we see the values are minus 1 rotation and 0. Let's see a preview of the sequence so far. Looks very cool. The 3D Pixel Storm animation sequence combined with Shapeshifter AE gives a metallic yet fluid effect. Now back to the displacement mapping. The displace height is set to 90. At the one second point in the timeline, we set a keyframe to 120. Now our shape is cylindrical. We'll go to the two second point in the timeline. We'll set the keyframe for displace height at 20. Our shape now looks much flatter. Let's scrub back to the beginning of our sequence and preview it again. Back to the beginning of our timeline. In Shapeshifter AE, we're going to set the generator to instance offset X at 140. Our instances are set at 36, offset Y at 180, and offset Z at 210. Next, at 3 seconds, we'll set it to 0 for all three axes. This is where the plus sign holds as a single shape. All the instances come together, but we know they're hiding, waiting to come alive again, like a hidden dragon. Now we're at the 419 point in the timeline. We'll keep it at 0. At the last part of our sequence, we add a keyframe for instance offset X at 50. Back to the beginning. Instance offset Y is at 180. At 3 seconds, instance offset Y is 0. Back to one shape, but we know those other shapes are hiding in there. At 15 seconds, we set it to 100. On to the Z instance offset. At 0 seconds, we set it to 210. At 3 seconds, we set it to, you guessed it, 0. All those little instances are hiding, just waiting to reappear. We go to 4 seconds, and we set the keyframe to stay at 0, but I know those instances are still in there. At 15 seconds, we put 200 as a value. Now let's scrub through and see what we've got. The landing point for the instances at 3 seconds is a visual resting point in our sequence. Good dynamic tension. Like a crouching tiger about to spring. If a crouching tiger were made of small metal pieces and could disperse over time... The next thing to look at is spiral rotation. Let's go back to the beginning and open the rotation setting. At the beginning of our timeline, our X value is at 8 degrees. Go to 218 and set a keyframe to 0. At 15 seconds, 9. On to rotation Y. 0 keyframe, minus 37 degrees. 2.21 seconds, 0. At 15 seconds, 5 degrees. Now rotation Z. 0 seconds, 18, 2.13 seconds, 0. 15 seconds, minus 6 degrees. Notice that we varied the placement of our keyframes for the X, Y, and Z axes. This is good. Let's see what we've got so far. 
Is it a crouching tiger or a hidden dragon? On to incremental rotation. We'll go through our three axes again. First setting the x at 0 to minus 12. 2.08 seconds, 0. The end of our timeline, 16. Now why? This keyframe to 16. At 216, 0. And finally, 18. Now z. At 0, set to minus 12. At 2.07, it's 0. And 15 seconds, the value is 14. You can see that we varied our keyframe placement in the timeline. We've randomized them, made things a bit more unpredictable and dynamic. The generator, so cool, a great feature in Shapeshifter AE. So that concludes part two of this 3D Pixel Storm tutorial series. Look for part three where I discuss deformations and the finishing touches to this great logo animation. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.